And what we'll do is we'll just um, kind of, I have some slides and then maybe that'll trigger some questions. Uh, and of course you can stop me anytime. I'll try and remember to stop and say, what questions do you have? So um, we are a pretty new school and we really focus very much on um, kind of providing content frameworks and some experiences for students so that they can kind of become like, not kind of, sorry, where they get to like develop their character, work on real world stuff and also strengthen their core content knowledge, which is really about becoming lifelong learners. Our, our goal is really to just create students that are interested in learning themselves um, and growing in their own way. What makes us different than any other program really in the state <laughs> is that we're completely mastery based. Um, if you take courses directly from us, now if they take IDLA courses or college courses, of course, there's some exceptions to that rule, but if it's a course directly through us, it's mastery based. Um, and we customize how students approach what they're doing. And we really emphasize the student driven piece because we are so flexible that the student has to kind of own some of their um, education. But then if they struggle, we have that teacher support to make that work. And we've mm -hmm. got some great supports to get students started well, I think. And we really do believe in that last bullet there that's about character and competencies are really gained through content knowledge. Um, so we really push students to try and find a way to transfer the knowledge to real world situations. To kind of give you some deets, we are a public school, so we there's no expense. We're accredited just like every other Idaho school. We're in the middle of NCAA accreditation if there's any sports that are interested in. All of our teachers are certified in their specific content areas. We do have our courses, we have access to IDLA courses, and then we have access to the whole gamut of dual credit for the whole state. Uh, and we help fund those. We, we support families by giving lots of choice in the tools that are used, the resources that are there, the experiences students in, engage in. And so we really allow students to kind of customize the way they get through high school. Um, more details, we include face-to-face, -face, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Some face-to-face -face activities, you can see me over there rock climbing in Twin Falls <laughs> with a student that was rough because um, I felt really old that day. Anyway, then we have some clubs. The ones that are listed here, Mr. So we have Mock Trial and Entrepreneurship. They say they're clubs, but I'm not sure that they're really considered clubs. We still give credit in them. And then we have a student council as well. Mr. Clayson's in charge of the Mock Trial and Entrepreneurship groups. We do some, and I'll talk more about these last two points later on, but we do some school trips, one annually, um, which is that national trip. But this year it's to national parks and next year we're gonna take some students to Washington, DC. Um, we have a hybrid model that we're starting to pilot this year and then we'll do a lot more next year. We'll have some days where we can work face to face, possibly at PCCS is one of our locations that's possible for a couple hours a week. If students need a place to fall to be able to have a teacher with them, or me, just to have an adult's help. Um, and then we are, yeah, we'll get back to some of those other things in a little bit. So what does our course look like? And what we do is we really allow students um, with teachers and their, their own ideas to choose tools they use to learn. So unlike a regular building where you're given everything, we help you find what you want to, how you want to learn. Um, all of our teachers give some, like these are some recommended ways you can learn the material because we know them, but they're not required. Um, we also just kind of like allow students to show what they're learning however they want. So much like PCCS, we really enjoy projects or portfolio items. We, we call them just artifacts of learning. But you can see that these are three different examples. One was, you know, on the left, there was a timeline with some description and lots of illustration about um, some specific historical events that were read about and learned about. And that was turned into both English and history. Um, the middle piece was a piece of art that was just actually describes a book that a student read. So that was turned into English. And then they get a, gave a little description of why this uh, piece of art connected with the, explained a lot about the story. And then on the right, another student created a newspaper on the turned into English and history as well, I think. Um, our big growth idea is that we really want students to just learn as much as they can and grow from where they came from. 
So our students are giving, I'll, I'll always get feedback from their teachers that are about taking a student's surface understanding, for example, like definitions, um, vocabulary words, uh, simple math equations, dates, times from history, and moving from that to understand how they those things connect to each other. And then we really, really ask students to get to that place, ultimately, if possible, to connect to real world stuff. And so our teachers give feedback on everything that's turned in, trying to push students to the next level wherever they started. Um, and we really intentionally try and move students from a very teacher-centered type of learning to very much a student-directed type of learning. And for some it's easy, for some it's not. <laughs> and I'll talk about some supports we have there for that. Um, these are just some examples of some of the things that this rubric on the left is just something we kind of explains what we're talking about the surface and the transfer. So our teachers give feedback trying to move students from a one to a three. Um, we have other pieces of that that we're working on, but the process is more like this um, this set of gears over here on the side, on the right hand side. We're having students work through that set of gears, and it kind of goes around this way, actually. I always do it the wrong way. Um, but the idea is to make some meaning. They're going to read, write, and think about topics. They're going to investigate the topics. Um, and then they're going to create some sort of product or artifact and turn it into a teacher to get feedback, their content teacher. Then the teacher's going to respond. At that point, we call that an in-progress assignment. Um, the student's going to, or the teacher's going to look at it and respond, and then they're going to get feedback. So then the student uses that feedback to make some growth, turns it back into the teacher, there could be a couple of times where that cycle spins around a little bit just to make sure that the student has learned enough and grown. And then we mark that thing as mastery once the, what the teacher needs from that has been met. Um, these are some resources that we provide for every student in every class. Um, on the left, it's called an outline that this next year, but we call them frameworks this year. Um, but it's basically just tells you that the four main topics for geometry A are these these main topics, and there's kind of an explanation underneath for the student to understand it better. These are the things that the teacher's looking for or could be looking for to prove that you understand that topic. Um, and each one of these, we're revising them to make them much more student friendly this year. But just just so you know that every, every course that we have, that we provide has one of these outlines for every credit. And that is kind of our rule. There's four topics for one credit. So that's really quite, I think it's simple. Um, the top right thing underneath the word that says learning resources, that's that's the, kind of what a Google Classroom looks like for Mrs. Whitworth. And um, the centerpiece where it says important information, that's kind of a, a snapshot of what it looks like once you go into the classwork for the class. So you can see the topic transformations and constructions listed there. So there's gonna be two places to submit for that. And then on the right, um, some teachers have websites for their particular content to make it easier for students to find other ways to learn it. Are there any questions so far? I mean, that's a lot of information. <laughs> that is a lot of information, but um, not that I can think of right now. Okay. okay. Um, our students, unlike a regular brick and mortar student, because we don't pay for buildings, they get a learning budget. And I will say that this is just a draft of what it looks like for next year. Um, you can use that learning budget to purchase your tools. So if you have a curriculum that you want to use, or if we need to get you a program, a computer program, or pay for a class online, this is this this money is for that. Um, we can also help pay for technology stuff, computers, um, and like internet, if that's part of the deal. Um, this money also rolls over rolls over year to year, so um, that means that you could build up a good good account. Um, we do take a small maintenance fee out at the end of every year. Just thought I'd mention it here. And then it can be used to attend school events. So for example, that national trip, some students use this these funds to pay for their trip down to the different national parks or to go to Washington DC next year. Um, and like for this year, we're taking kids to the physics day at Lagoon, which I assume will be an annual thing. The student funds can be used for that as well. But it's kind of a reward system. So when a student reaches a certain level, for example, if they're at 10% in progress, that means they've turned in 10% of their topics, then we put into their account that first 
after they reach their 20% in progress, then they get the next $150. And it's kind of, this is just the template for next year. There are some changes that we're making to it, but just to know that it's about $1,400, $1,450 over the course of the year can be put into account if the student is on track. Okay. So that's, that's a huge advantage of our school. It's mostly reimbursement. If it's a specific thing that we need to buy, I usually do that if I can on Amazon. And then there's no tax, so it saves a little money. Um, I think one of the best things that we've been able to do since all the COVID craziness has finally subsided is that we've been doing a lot of face-to-face -face events. Um, we do five, well, three face-to-face -face events in every region. So in Pocatello, we've done laser tag, we've done a hike. There was one other event we did here, and I cannot remember what it was, but most regions we've done three different events. And you can see some pictures from kids rock climbing, the bottom right picture is playing laser tag in, in Twin Falls. Um, the top right hand one that of all the kids acting crazy with my hand in the middle of it is us eating pizza at laser tag with a few kids here in Pocatello. So. And we did an escape room in Idaho yep. Falls. Yep. And I don't have any pictures of that because it was dark in the room. <laughs> I have video. <laughs> um, so what class is required? We are at the state minimum to get a diploma, and that's because we want as many students as possible to get it, use what's called advanced opportunities, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but you need 46 credits to graduate, and in our school, eight topics equals two credits, or four topics equals one credit. And you can kind of see these are the state requirements. I will say our electives, where it says this includes the senior project, it also includes a couple other things. But do you want to look at this page anymore? because I can go to the next one and kind of explain the elective, the new elective stuff we've got going on. No, you, you can okay. move on. Um, so our brand new students are required to do two, well, there's three things. We call home base, it's two credits, but it's a Monday or Tuesday. There's a synchronous like Google Meet just like this. Mm -hmm. um, there are four different, next year we'll have two teams. And so each team will provide four different times during Monday or Tuesday that the student could attend. Of course, we ex encourage kids to stay with the same time because they get to know some of the kids that are in the groups that way. Mm -hmm. um, these things focus on building relationships amongst the kids and with the mentor, because their mentor kind of serves as the student's guide through their education. And they get to choose their mentor as well. Um, we talk a lot about character and competency. So some of those topics include like digital literacy, financial literacy. What are you guys doing right now? Is it team? building teams or oh, communication communication so yeah, we have we're talking about creative communication in a game so, so it's really meant to be bigger picture things um, that might not get covered in a core content so like I know there's civic responsibility leadership those types of things um, and like I said, that's worth two credits over the course of the year. It's a half an hour meeting that's on Monday or Tuesday, and it is a requirement for every new student that they participate. Um, maybe if, I think we're going to put it like at an 80%. The cool thing is that there's four different times that they can attend, and the teachers also videotape them. So if a student can't attend physically, then they can watch and give feedback or reflective and be saying that they watched it. Um, the other thing that's new next year, or we're actually running it right now, is a student success course. Because we found that once students leave a brick and mortar building and come to us or change whatever environment they're used to, we are not that. <laughs> no matter what, we aren't like any other school I know of. So the student success course is really designed to help students. Um, it's, it's two times a week, um, and there are four topics to complete. And then the student has to get 10% in progress. Um, and it's synchronous because then they can ask the questions and have discussion with students to figure out how they're doing it. And we do that. Most kids can be completed in four sessions. They could be there are Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then they're done with this course. Um, but the idea is to make sure that they know how to learn in this environment. Yeah. And yeah, it's going to be, I think it's a huge helpful thing for students. So these three credits are part of everybody's first year with us, no matter what. Okay. Okay. Um, Work-based experience, I just, 
this this is just a highlight on one of the course areas that we have. We have work-based experience, college career exploration, job shadows and internships as well, all available all through their high school career. So if a student has a full-time job or I mean a part-time job, um, they can still earn high school credit. There's some reflection and then a log of hours. So it's not a horrible deal. Um, and we offer college credits and certifications also. Um, our, we have some dual credit classes, which I'll show you in a minute and kind of how this all breaks out, but um, they're counted towards the straight state graduation requirements with us and they go on the high college credit transcript and we can use advanced opportunities to pay for them. So it's a, okay. it's a great deal. Um, those other things I'm gonna just put off. We do have some students that are looking for certifications rather than just a, a college degree or something. And we've had CNA kids. We have one kid right now in welding courses, um, those types of things, especially when they get to their older grades, when they, you know, when they finished all the core stuff that they need to. Mm -hmm. um, these are dual credit classes that we're offering next year. And there actually might be one more biology course. It's called biology 201. So on the left-hand side, that's the ones that our teachers actually teach. Okay. Um, um, and the biology 201 is for, it's just a, a biology course. It says American biology. That's awesome. Anyway, <laughs> as I opposed to Spanish that, biology. Okay. Yeah, I think fine. that's a typo. I don't think that our biology <laughs> is significantly different than anybody else's. <laughs> that's awesome. That was what happens when I copy and paste as part of a slide. <laughs> well, let me change it for my whatever reason. Okay. <laughs> we'll fix it later. But um, this next year, Mr. Clayson, so the other biology course is a medical biology. So it's Med biology 201. So if somebody is headed towards biology, it meets a core requirement for that. Um, or if they're headed towards a medical career, that's the biology. Yeah. Um, this year we're offering writing and rhetoric next year. I mean, world history is not probably a new one next year. Um, we do have the full catalog on IDLA. And there's a link that I put into the chat here. So you want to, if you want to bring up the slide, all of this stuff that is underlined is, is linked. So you can pull it up and see what's offered. Um, and we do, like I I don't know if I said this earlier, but we have some students that actually are fit, sit, physically sitting in college classes because we will we'll fund any um, college course with through our program. They get college credit and high school credit. Okay. So in that link, all of this, here's a whole bunch more information you can look up. <laughs> it's almost okay. overwhelming. And then the last thing is that any questions you have, and then I'm going to put this SROHS link in there, just hoping that if you have, um, it would be good for us to know information about Ken and, and yourself so we can share information with you if you're interested. Okay. So, what questions can I answer? That's lovely. Um, well, I was kind of jotting down just a few little things. Are you, do you guys, so if the kids are working, in their own schedules you guys really don't go by do you go by trimesters or semesters i mean with the with the teachers or they divide the term? <laughs> we have one term just the year just a year okay yep so okay. classes that um scott was saying that some of the classes have eight topics and they're two credits mm -hmm. so in the traditional high school, that would be like a two semester class. And some students use that to pay themselves to think I should be done with the A half in January around Christmas yeah. and then I'll do the B half. But other students are much more like topically driven and they're mm -hmm. like, I'm going to work on my history and my math. They just plug on those topics. And okay. then when they finish one off, then they choose a different one. So they're not tied into one system or another. And that's okay. kind of where that in progress percentage comes into play because okay. every student enrolled in 12 credits because you have to do 46 credits to graduate. So 12 times four is 48. Right. Um, so every year we ask students to do 12 credits. And then it's a simple thing to say every credit has four topics. So there's 48 topics over the course of the year. Simple division problem, one out of 48 is about every topic that's turned in is about 1.5% to get them to 100% by the end of the year. 
So that means most typically, most students need to turn in two to three topics a week mm -hmm. to grad to be done with their credits. But and that's how the funds come to them as well. So. Okay, and you guys don't care whether they work like Monday through Wednesday and just plug along and then take Thursday and Friday and have a part-time job or? Yeah, absolutely not. Most students can typically, if they will set out three hours a day, Monday through Thursday, because we're, we're considered a four-day school week. Our teachers are off on Friday. If they oh, work okay. the three hours, Monday through Thursday, they can be done with everything on time. And probably be done early and that's also a possibility if a student worked hard and wanted to be done by april they could do that mm -hmm. we have some students that work full-time during the fair and so they do nothing during those two weeks but they're they make it up before or after right so okay. in fact i'm there <laughs> at the fair because our yeah some of our one of our families owns a booth there so many of our students work in the booth <laughs> oh nice yeah um, so then summertime would probably be like a time they could do like IDLA classes yep. if they wanted to, to keep going. We do offer, like I said, IDLA as well. They can take all their IDLA courses, but they are obviously on their time schedule, not ours. And those would be yep. the only grades that show letter grades in our school. We give mastery grades mm -hmm. for the rest of our courses and we only give one grade. It's an M. Um, yeah. and so if a student doesn't finish all four topics for a course before the end of the year, that course just rolls into the next year. It oh. doesn't show in your transcript that you didn't complete. Okay. Okay. And then you said something about, so I was unclear about textbooks. Are there regular textbooks that go with this stuff or? No. Um, Mr. Clayson's smiling because he doesn't know what a textbook is. He's never used one in his life. Um, we, we're really 21st century people. So most we have recommended tools that you can use the, mm -hmm. so that learning budget can be used to purchase a textbook if that's what you wanted. Um, but we have access to most things digitally. Um, and most of them, we have at least one recommendation that's free in each of the courses. So you don't necessarily have to use that money for that. We, I really just encourage kids if they ever want to do one of the experiences, the big trips, that they should just save their learning budget as much as they can because like going to Washington DC is going to be a couple grand for each kid. And right. it's a real big uh, burden off of parents and quite a huge experience if they can go to Washington mm -hmm. DC for six days and not, you don't have much to pay out. So. And you can earn some credits through those trips. So like this year, they're going to national parks and learn some science credits and we'll probably develop a um, curriculum once they go to dc to earn some some u.s history credits or, or american government credits so there's kind of killing birds with one stone idea there yeah and our trip to uh lagoon mrs corgatelli is working on some projects uh that will help them get part of their physics credit either in their physical science class or in the physics course oh okay and, uh, a math the geometry teacher also designed a a way for students to get a geometry credit through doing one of the projects at Lagoon. And so awesome. every year we try and add new, like flexible ways to try to encourage kids to learn and to enjoy doing it. Yeah. I like that concept. That's, that's, you know, the charter school that Cam's gone to for his whole school career is mm -hmm. kind of based off of that too, I think. Yeah, so that's that's how we're connected with PCCS. I'm their instructional guide over there, so nice. I I work with every teacher in the building. So they're they're definitely part of what you know. You guys, they talk about their attributes of high quality work. That's actually part of what we do as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Um, I think that's probably all I have question wise. Uh, like I said, I haven't had a chance to review your website, but I will I will go through there. And if I do have questions, there's um, is there a place where I can ask those on there? Absolutely. Let me I'll just go there. It's srohs.snakeriver.org. Okay. Um, if you Google it, it doesn't go directly to us. There's it's kind of a roundabout for some reason. I cannot get it get fixed. But if 
if you Google us, look for the one that actually says our na full name, okay. not IDLA, because that'll help our our real site go to the top of the page. That's why these everybody needs to go there right now. Google, anyway, <laughs> sorry. The more we do it, the better it gets. <laughs> but on the left-hand side, I mean, there's kind of some navigation stuff here. Um, there's okay. our calendar. Um, the open enrollment form is here. So if you decide to do this, that's there. Um, but if you need a contact over here on the easiest is the easiest way to just click on contact us and you can you can talk to any one of our teachers you can set an appointment with myself or anybody and it'll just show up on their calendar give you an invite see it i have a different available days and each of our teachers do as well okay so that's kind of the list of everybody great all right well i appreciate you guys' time yeah, no problem. We appreciate you. If you have any questions, let us know, of course. All right. Yeah, good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thanks.